Welcome to the CBS Radio Mystery Theater Archives, the only YouTube channel which has the original classic episodes of the CBS Radio Mystery Theater in order with no ads. Thank you for listening, and now, enjoy the show. Marshall. We all know the phrase brotherly love used to express strong ties of affection. But actual brothers may be bitter enemies. Is it because they are so different or because they are so much alike that their ties are twisted into a tangled web of misunderstanding, a form of self-hatred rather than love, with the shortcomings of one blamed upon the other? Acting together, their power for evil can be devastating, especially when antagonisms are passed on from one generation to the next. If anything would happen to me, Jerry, what would you do? Well, I'd go ahead with the sale, of course, and claim the inheritance. Well, no, not all of it. You can't. Now, don't worry, Gordon. Nothing's going to happen. But, Jerry, if it does... Promise me you'll take care of my family. Look, I don't have any obligation whatever to your wife and oh, kids. please, Jerry... Promise. I'm I'm scared. Something's happening to me. I I can't breathe. Our mystery drama, Stamped for Death, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Elizabeth Pennell and stars Lloyd Batista and Russell Horton. It is sponsored in part by General Electric Citizen Band Radios. And Buick Motor Division. I'll be back shortly with Act One. George Taylor was a stern and taciturn man who was never close to either of his two sons, although he seemed to favor his younger son, Jeremy. If he ever shared his true feelings with anyone, it was his wife. But he had been a widower for some years, and today, if anyone knew anything about his personal affairs... That would be his lawyer. Now George Taylor is dead, and his sons have returned to the Midwestern town of their youth to attend his funeral. Although they arrive from opposite directions, they are now together, waiting impatiently in the lawyer's outer office. Come in, Gordon. Jeremy, it's been a long time. I want to know why my father's house is locked. No one met me at the plane, and you didn't tell me where to get the key. I had my instructions, I... Uh... I thought you might stay with your uncle. Have you been in touch with him? Uh, no. Uh, did you call him, Gordon? I haven't talked to Uncle Morgan in years. Well, I left a message, but his wife said he might not be able to come. Well, what's the matter with him? Well, your uncle's a very old man. Don't and... tell me Dad left something to Uncle Morgan. <clears throat> well, since the other party has already been informed, we might as well... Uh, 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 just, just a minute. What other party? I will proceed with the reading of the will. That's what we're here for. I, George Taylor, being of sound and disposing mind, declare this to be my last will and testament. First, I bequeath my house and its contents to Miss Agnes Bodwell. What? Agnes who? Agnes Bodwell. She's a registered nurse. A nurse? Oh, you said father died suddenly. Healthiest man I ever knew all his life. Who, who the devil is Miss this? Miss Bodwell took care of your mother years ago when she was bedridden. Well, I'll be damned. Uh, where is this Miss uh, What's-Her-Name? You know, she's been called away on a case and won't be able to attend the funeral. Well, what about the house? She hasn't had time to decide what to do with it. Who cares about that old house? I don't want it. You Please, read on. To my brother Morgan, I leave a single stamp. The one known as the Brattleboro Eagle. He will know what to do with it. A single stamp? Oh, that's rich. Shows what Dad thought of Uncle Morgan. Perhaps he thought more of him than I would have guessed. Well, what do you mean? Well, your father was a stamp collector. Well, of course he was a collector. But what good is one stamp? I understand there are rarities. Oh, 
some stamps are valued at fifty, seventy-five thousand dollars a piece. You're kidding. Well, uh, keep reading. I'm the eldest son, and I want to know what my father left me. Yeah, and and you can skip the legal mumbo jumbo. And he goes on to say there's enough money in his executor's account to cover funeral and burial expenses and to clear any outstanding debts. And who is the executor? I am. That follows. Well, go on. Get to the substance of his will. Yeah, what about stocks and bonds or, or whatever else he had by way of investments? Well, that I don't know. You don't know? Your father was a very secretive man. Even with his lawyer? With everyone. Look, you, you haven't finished reading the will. Now, now where, where do his heirs come in? I'm getting to that. The remainder of my estate I leave to my two sons, Gordon and Jeremy. It is sealed in a case which has been turned over to my executor for safekeeping. Ah, that, that must be the stock certificates and bank books. In witness thereof, I have hereunto set my hand and sealed... Oh, look, forget all that. Where are these important papers? Well, I have no knowledge of the contents of the case, but I do have the key. Where is it? Right here. My instructions are to unlock the container in the presence of both of you. So what are we waiting for? Oh, I can't do anything more today. Well, in the name of heaven, why not? Because it's in a vault at the bank, and the bank closed at 3 o'clock. When does it open? 9 tomorrow morning. I'll pick up the case and take it to you. Now, where will you be? Well, I'm staying with relatives of my wife. Uh, here's the address. Oh, no, you don't. Not with a bunch of people looking on. We'll, um, we'll meet in my hotel room. Where's that damn fool lawyer? What time is it? Uh, ten after ten. We should... Uh... Hello? Yes. Yes, yes. Uh, send him right up. Uh, do you think this lawyer is on the level? What if he's pulling a fast yeah, one? That thought occurred to me. But you know how crazy cautious Dad was about the people he did business with. Well, just suppose our fine executor removed a few items nah, like... Nah, don't start imagining things. The certificates will have our names on them. And he wouldn't... Do... I'll get it. Come in. Ooh, <laughs> it's, it's a whopper, isn't it? Yeah, it's heavy, too. It feels as if it were full of books. I thought you meant a briefcase. That's practically a trunk. It's a suitcase, actually. And you see, it's sealed with tape as well as lock. Well, here goes. Let's rip the tape off. Come on. Come on. Where's the key? I have it right here. I feel like the male counterpart of Pandora. Uh, uh, there. Uh, and it's just a bunch of folders. I'll take that gray one. All right, George, there are books in there. Wait a minute, there's, there's nothing in this folder but stamps. Sheets and sheets of them. Well, the other stuff must be at the bottom. This book is filled with stamps, too. <laughs> Colorful, aren't they? Yeah, I'm only interested in one color, green. Don't be stupid. That wouldn't stash away folding money. Well, there's got to be something more. Uh, uh, look in the pockets for bank books. I felt all along the sides and inside the top. Uh, keep keep looking through those folders. Yeah. Uh, that is nothing but crummy sheets of stamps. I don't think you're going to find anything else. You said you didn't know what was in here. I didn't. But your father told me not long ago that he had consolidated all his holdings. Well, then where are they? He had stocks and bonds, I know he did, and, and a large bank account. At one time, maybe, but it looks to me as though he converted everything into his stamp collection. What a dirty trick. Not with all these unused stamps in perfect condition. You may have inherited a sizable fortune. How much do you think? Well, I'm no stamp collector. I wouldn't have the slightest idea, and I don't know anyone in this town who would. Well, then I'll, I'll take him back to New York with me. The big city will have several stamp appraisers. I'll find out who's the uh, best. Uh, nothing doing. As the eldest son, I'll take charge of this suitcase. Don't you touch it. I can find an appraiser just as well as you can. There must be plenty in Southern California. Oh, I think you'd be better off in New York. Down by Wall Street on Nassau, there's a whole city block. So, full so, of... so it's settled. I'm, I'm taking them with me. Not unless I come along. I'll change my plans and fly back east with you. Well, then I'll keep the case right here for the night. I wouldn't trust you alone with it for five minutes. Well, what do I know about stamps? You know enough to remove something which might look tempting. We could uh, divide these folders up right now. Half for you, half for me. Well, you'll be sorry if you do. I imagine it's the total collection that would have the highest value. Well, when do we leave? I'm booked on the first flight out after the funeral tomorrow. 
three o'clock in the afternoon. Well, my mission is complete as far as you two men are concerned. I'll be leaving. Not without the suitcase. Well, I don't understand. You see, <laughs> I don't trust my brother Gordon any more than he trusts me. So you keep the stamps overnight and then bring them to us at the airport tomorrow. <laughs> quite sure your flight hasn't been canceled? Yeah, seems to be right on schedule. Yeah, what I thought with all those hurricane warnings on the East Coast... Doesn't mean a you... thing to these big jets. Well, and I'm glad to see the last of this suitcase. Here you are. Oh, thank you. Uh, thank you. Incidentally, they won't let you take it along on board the plane. It's too big for hand luggage. I'll check it through on my ticket. Uh, no, 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 you won't. I have almost no luggage, and I'll check it out on mine. All right, snap out of it, boys. Am I still the family arbiter? <laughs> All right, here, I'll toss a coin. Your call, Gordon. Heads. Tails. Suitcase goes on your ticket, Jeremy. He always did get the brakes. <laughs> Joey, I just thought of something. Uh, don't bother me. I'm trying to sleep. Uh, but I just thought, what if Uncle Morgan really got the best of the deal? Uh, well, how could he? Well, if that one stamp is so valuable, maybe that's where all Dad's money went. Impossible. Now, what makes you so sure? I told you, he cleaned up in that big oil deal. You cleaned up on it, too, didn't you? I never cleaned up on anything. Believe me, I'm just as poor as you are. So will you shut up and let me get some sleep? Sign. Jerry, huh? Jerry, wake up. Uh, uh, what do you want now? Fasten your seatbelt. Um, why, are we getting ready to land? Well, not yet, but the stewardess made an announcement. Oh, uh, uh, where is she? Uh, uh, stewardess, I I'd like a cup of coffee. Oh, I'm sorry, not right now, sir. We're experiencing a little turbulence. Oh, must have slept longer than I thought. It's pitch black out there. Except for the lightning. We've hit some really rotten weather. I don't like it, Jerry. I... I just thought of something else. Oh, what is it now? Is that suitcase insured? Well, I didn't insure it. You should have thought of that before we left. Uh, how could I? Anyway, we don't know the value. Well, relax. We'll soon know what it's worth. Please be sure your seatbelts are fastened and observe the no smoking sign. What the devil's going on? Hey, Gordon, will you take it easy? Ladies and gentlemen, your captain has asked me to assure you there's no cause for alarm. You may experience Jerry, where are your baggage checks? Well, uh, they're, they're in my wallet. Show me where. Oh, for Pete's sake. Yeah, but what if something should happen? What, to you or to me? Either way, show me the baggage checks so that if I had to get Stop being morbid. Suppose something happens to both of us. Ah, and I guess our friendly lawyer will be left holding the bag again. And, and if something should happen to me, promise you'll take care of my family. Now, what makes you think a bachelor doesn't have responsibility? Well, not like mine. Promise me you... I don't have any obligation whatsoever to your wife. And kids. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention, please. Your captain is in full command. We can all cooperate by remaining calm. Why doesn't the captain come on and tell us so himself? I imagine he's too busy handling the plane. How can you be so calm? Uh, Jerry. Jerry, something's happening to me. I, I can't breathe. We are coming in for an emergency landing. I repeat, we are forced to make an emergency landing. Should the plane become depressurized, the compartment over your head will open automatically. Take the oxygen mask and place it firmly over the mouth and nose. Gordon, do what she says. Look, promise me, Jeremy. Promise me that you... Good Lord. But we're out of control. The plane is going to crash. <laughs> frighten anyone with details of a plane crash. Actually, statistics prove that air travel is the safest means of modern transportation. And many a storm has been weathered with little more than a few moments of uneasiness. Nevertheless, our unloving brothers are in a situation ominous enough to terrify the bravest. We'll find out what happens when I return shortly with Act Two. Wills are written for protection, but sometimes an inheritance causes more dissension than joy. 
We have yet to find out who will reap the benefit of George Taylor's estate, a stamp collection which could be of great value. His two sons were planning to turn it into cash when they got to New York. But did they reach their destination? You will recall that George Taylor had an older brother, Morgan, and by the terms of the will, this older brother inherited a single stamp, reputed to be a rarity. He's examining it right now while his wife does the breakfast dishes. More coffee, Morgan? No, thank you, dear. I'm fine. Oh, wouldn't you know my hands are wet. I'm coming, I'm coming. Hello? Who? Oh, yes. Who is it? Your brother's lawyer. You know, the man who brought you the stamp. I wonder what he wants. Uh, No. Uh, No, we never look at television in the morning. No, the radio's not on just now. Yes, we do have a newspaper, but we haven't gotten around to it yet. We save that for the afternoon. Well, what, what, what is it, Martha? What's happened is so important. <gasps> My goodness. Is that so? Oh, yes. Yes, I will. Well, uh, thank you very much for calling. Well, now, what was that all about? Does he want the stamp back? Uh, no, no, nothing to do with your stamp. Then well, what is it? Your nephews. They've been in a plane crash. What? I thought that would get a rise out of you. Uh, Martha, please, stop teasing. Have have they been hurt? No. Both escaped without a scratch. That's what the lawyer phoned to tell us. Oh, thank goodness. They're all right. Where's the morning newspaper? Let's find out what happened. Oh, here it is. All over the front page. Read it to me. Um, jetliner, flight to New York. The plane was caught on the tail end of that big hurricane we heard about yesterday. Oh, a really bad storm. Uh-huh. Huh? And it goes on to say, emergency landings skillfully handled by the pilot. Courageous crew evacuated all passengers without a casualty. Are the boys' pictures there? No, but take a look at what was once the plane. It caught fire right after all the passengers escaped. Think of that. It says the mail bags burned up. And every bit of baggage completely destroyed. Oh, what difference does that make as long as no lives were lost? Oh, my goodness. That telephone never seems to stop ringing. Ever since the boys were in that plane accident, people have been calling to talk. Yes, turned this into some sort of celebrity. Just to, uh, hurry up, Martha. Answer the phone. Hello? Why, hello, Gordon. Yes, your uncle's here, but it's hard for him to get to the phone. May I give him the message? I'll come if you just help me up out of this chair. Yes, yes, it, just, just a minute. Um, Gordon's in town, and he wants to see you. Ask if he can come right over. Well, of course, of course. I'm not doing anything. Uh, yes, Gordon, right away. Right. Goodbye. Neither of my nephews has set foot in this house for the last ten years. I wonder what Gordon has on his mind. It certainly was a relief to learn that you'd come to no harm, Gordon. But it must have been a terrible experience for both of you. You bet it was, but uh, I'll come right to the point. Yeah, I wish you would. Uncle Morgan, how much money did my father have? Well, that's a strange question for you to ask me. How would I know? Well, you must have some idea. When your father bragged me once a long time ago that he was well on the way to becoming a millionaire. Did you believe him? He never discussed his personal affairs, but when your father made up his mind to get what he wanted... But all that money, what became of it? I was under the impression from your father's will that You and your brother inherited the bulk of his estate. What we inherited was a collection of stamps. Oh, you're lucky. Your father had a very valuable collection. How valuable? Why, his block of Colombian inverts alone would be worth, mm, say, $20,000. And that one sheet of misprinted commemorative... Uncle Morgan, I don't know anything about stamp collecting. You see, the entire collection burned in that plane crash. (gasps) Oh, well, now, that does make a difference. Darn right it makes a difference. Jerry and I are wiped out. Uh, Maybe you don't know that I was recently laid off, 
And I am completely broke. Oh, I'm sorry. Uncle Morgan, you're the only person I can turn to. You have to loan me some money. I've got to have money to live. Well, so do we all. Yeah, but you're comfortable. Look at this house. Mortgage to the hip. I only want to borrow some money. Your aunt and I get by just barely on Social Security and the interest on a few small investments. It's hardly enough to pay our monthly bills. Look, there's no use beating around the bush. I happen to know that by the terms of my father's will, you were left a, a <laughs> oh, single stamp. Oh, Gordon, you've upset him. Now, your uncle can't talk anymore. He'll hear me out. <laughs> Not now. I will have to ask you to leave. Uncle Morgan, you... Now, that will be all, Gordon. Your uncle has had enough for one day. I'll be back. You can count on it. I'll be back. Morgan, are you all right? Certainly, I'm all right. Oh, thank heaven. You are a KG-1. <laughs> you were putting on an act, weren't you? Of course. And you did very well, too. <laughs> Morgan, you are going to sell the stamp that your brother left you, aren't you? Well, it all depends. Well, it could make a great difference in our lives. Mm, for better or worse, do you think? Well, you know I've never complained. Well, I'm suspicious of my so-called inheritance. Why should my dear brother George think kindly of me for once in his miserable life? Well, maybe he was trying to make up for the past. Uh, you know, he did play me for a sucker. And his sons are nothing but chips off the old block. Morgan, guess who phoned while you were taking a nap? No need to tell me. I've been expecting to hear from my second nephew. Jeremy will be here this afternoon. Good. When he comes, bring him into my bedroom and I'll be working on my stamps. How are you, Uncle Morgan? Oh, well enough, I suppose. You're sure. an old man. Mm, sure looks familiar seeing you with a stamp collection. I remember when I was a kid how you and Dad used to compare notes. Ah, uh, you're quite mistaken if you think we ever compared notes. But you both collected stamps. Well, I was never anything but a hobbyist. My father was an investor. He always said I didn't know a damn thing about stamps. Uncle Morgan, uh, I'd like to see the stamp my father left you. Is it, uh, here? No, it's been put away for safekeeping. Oh, you mean it's not in the house? Well, I didn't say that. But my eyesight is not what it used to be, and I wouldn't want to get it mixed up. Well, uh, it. tell me where it is. I'll 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 get it for you. Oh, not now, Jeremy. Let's just have a visit. Uh, uh, tell me, how is your business doing? Oh, my business. What a laugh. Uncle Morgan, the... Uh... The fact is, I, I need money, and I have a proposition to make to you. I've already made it clear to your brother that I'm penniless, so don't ask me for a loan. I know a way we can both benefit from the stamp my father left you. Tell me. Uh, turn the stamp over to me, and I'll put it up as collateral for a business loan to tide me over. Then I'll give you your share of... My your... share? Well, that stamp was left to me. Well, sure, but you and Aunt Martha will have plenty of money to live on, and when I get on my feet, you'll have the stamp back. Don't, don't you see? Well, that's a proposition I'd have to think about. Why don't you think about it now? Oh, well, in good time, Jeremy. Uh, that's enough for today. I'll get in touch with you when I've thought it over. Gordon, you said you were going to talk to your lawyer. Have you come to any conclusion? Well, I haven't been able to see him yet. But I'm convinced that my father was not in his right mind when he made his will. Oh, what are you going to do? Unless you agree to sell the stamp and give me my rightful share, I'm going to sue you. Why, come in, Jeremy. What lovely flowers. For a lovely lady, Aunt Martha. Oh, thank you. I suppose you want to see your uncle. Oh, no, not at all. I, I came especially to see you. I can't believe this is strictly a social call. Oh, but it is. I thought you and I could get together and do something nice for Uncle Morgan. Oh, that's very thoughtful. I realize that now he's mostly confined to his bed. Uh, 
You must be the family decision maker. Morgan and I have always worked together. Oh, it's only natural with someone his age. Uncle Morgan's mind works slowly. On the other hand, if you and I... I got... You want that stamp for collateral, don't you? Exactly. Where is it, Aunt Martha? Perhaps I shouldn't be doing this. But if we can do anything to make your Uncle Morgan more comfortable, I'll cooperate. Well, you have the right idea. So, now, if you would uh, give the stamp to me... We've uh, been keeping the package in this desk drawer. I assure you, you will never regret this, Aunt Martha. Here. Martha! Martha! Uh, just a minute, Morgan. Uh, don't, don't tell him I was here. I'll leave quiet. Martha! Can you come in here, please? <laughs> Old man, it worked. Just the way you said it would. <laughs> he fell for the whole scheme, huh? Hook, line, and sinker. <laughs> Wait till he opens the package and finds out there's nothing but a sheet of blank paper. <laughs> that worries me, Morgan. If Jeremy would go so far as to steal, then he might very well... Ah, I bet you a nickel, Martha. That's the other one back to bother us. Uncle Morgan, I'm fed up with all this stalling around. I've been expecting to hear from your lawyer, Gordon. You did mention legal steps. Yeah, he that... said the suit is inadvisable. And I'm tired of waiting for you to sell that stamp. In all my life, I've never acted in haste. You're just like my father, with absolutely no concern for me. Now, take it easy, Gordon. I always got the short end of the stick. No one ever paid any attention to what I wanted. I'd appreciate it if you'd stop shaking my Uncle bed. Uncle Morgan, I could kill you for the way you... <laughs> hey, you hurting my arm. Gordon, Gordon, stop it. Get away from your uncle's bed. You leave this house at once. <laughs> Are you sure you're all right? Yes, yes, yes. He, he didn't hurt me. Oh, but the coughing fit. You aren't putting it on this time, are you? No, Martha, no. Uh, oh, I feel better now. I'm going to call the doctor. The best medicine will be to keep those wretched nephews away. I will do anything Not to... Not to worry, Martha, dear. Just get a paper and pencil and let me dictate a letter. It certainly was good of you to come all this way to look at my husband's stamp. Oh, I'd travel around the world if I thought there was a chance to purchase the very rare Brattle Barrel Eagle. Well, then it really is as valuable as they say. Oh, very. Very few are known to exist. And I have a potential buyer who's been searching for years. Um, Martha, would you bring us that folder, please? Now, I, I haven't promised that I'm ready to sell this stamp. Oh, by the way, are you any relation to the late George Taylor? Yes, he was my brother. We've been wondering what will become of his fine collection. I'll tell you after you've appraised my stamp. Uh, here. Please examine my Brattleboro Eagle. Hmm. A beauty, isn't it? Uh, the color has withstood the test of time. Uh, oh. And the perforations are good. Uh, may I go somewhere where there's better light? Over here by the window. And if you want to turn on the lamp... Oh, thank you. But we'll take a moment with the magnifying glass. You will sell it, won't you? We could be rich. Shh, shh, Martha. Wait till we hear what he says. Uh, I... <clears throat> I don't quite know how to put this. I'm ready for anything you have to tell me. Well, everything about it looks so right... The blue and, and this fleck of white. But on the back, did you happen to turn the stamp over? Yes, yes, I examined the back, but I've never known enough about well, stamps. Well, the glue. You see, they didn't use this type of adhesive back when this stamp was issued. Go on. And when I held it up to the light, I could tell that no wooden hand press could have possibly... It was manufactured more recently, was it? Well, I have yet to give it the watermark test, but... Uh, Mr. Taylor, I'm very sorry to say that from everything I've seen so far, your fine Bratterboro Eagle is a remarkable forgery. Now, there's a surprise and a deep disappointment. 
But perhaps this is the only way that Morgan Taylor could get his grasping nephews off his back. We would hope that he and Martha can live out the rest of their lives in peace, even if they must scrape along on very little. You might think this is the end of our story. Far from it. I assure you there are still some quite startling developments in store, which we'll come up with shortly in Act Three. Perhaps Morgan Taylor knew more about stamps all along. It would seem his brother had played a cruel joke, leaving him nothing but a worthless forgery. The valuable stamps in that collection are lost forever, and Morgan, who now knows he does not have long to live, is worried not about his own future, but about his wife. I'm sorry, Martha. If it had worked out differently... I would have put it all in your name. Oh, now, don't you worry about me. All we both must do is to help you get well, and the doctor said... Uh, I know what the doctor said. Then I can read between the lines. Now, Morgan, you're overwrought. But you can be sure we'll hear no more from your nephews once they know the truth about your magnificent inheritance. That's just it, Mother. I don't want them to know. What? Oh, oh, my dear husband. I should have guessed that you'd keep on playing the game. Well, if that's what you call it, a game. Will you play it with me? We've always been partners. I'll do anything you say. Well, then promise me that as long as I live, my nephews will never know that my grand inheritance was nothing but a scrap of worthless paper. We've come to apologize, Aunt Martha. I guess that plane wreck really uh, cracked us up for a while. First there was Dad's death, and Oh, then... your uncle and I understand. You boys have been through a great deal. Mm. How is Uncle Morgan? Well, I'm afraid he's not well. These past weeks have taken their toll. He must be kept very quiet. Well, may we see him? Oh, I think not. Oh, honestly, Aunt Martha, we just want to tell him how sorry we are. Well, uh, just for a minute. But only if you talk about cheerful things. Uncle Morgan? Is that you, George? Oh, uh, no. <laughs> no, I'm George's son, Gordon. Uh, I always wondered, George, why you didn't come to see me. But now, after all these years... Hi, you... Uncle Morgan. It, it, it's me, Jeremy. Uh, come closer, George. Let me get a good look at you. He's in bad shape. Boy, this is hopeless. You think I fooled the mother? <laughs> you came close to fooling me. <laughs> Ah, I'm deeply concerned. No, you mustn't be. I may have gotten even with Gordon and Jeremy, but there's no reason for them to take it out on you. No, they never will. But when I'm gone... Shh, shh. Morgan, why don't we burn the forged stamp? I have a much better solution. What have you done with it? Open the drawer in the bedside table and take out that envelope... Yes, Morgan? Uh, I want you to take that envelope right now and put it in the corner mailbox. Anything you say. Mm, look at it. Look at the address. Uh, Morgan, you've addressed it to the dead letter office? Well, that's exactly where it belongs. The dead letter office. What's our next move, Jerry? That all depends. Plan A or plan B. But they've taken the old man to the hospital. That makes a difference. He can't have long to live. Don't you believe it. He may be soft in the head, but he can go on for years and years with good nursing care. Hey, hello. Yes? Yes. My brother and I? We're the only relatives. E that's right. We'll be right there. If that's who I think it was... Grove Street Hospital. Uh, Dr. Miller wants us to go there at once. Hmm, things are happening sooner than we thought. I'm uh, Dr. Miller. Y uh, your name is Taylor? Oh, that's right. 
You've called us here because of our uncle? Uh, why, no. It's about Mrs. Taylor, your aunt. And Martha asked you to call us. We knew Uncle Morgan was in the hospital. But they're both here. Uh, Mrs. Taylor was brought in this morning with a coronary. Aunt Martha? How is she? Resting comfortably at the moment, but I felt it wise to notify the next of kin. Of course, you did the right thing. I'll uh, take you to her room. Hello, Gordon. Jeremy, nice of you to come. Well, we only just Aunt heard... Martha, this is no place for you. You're looking much too healthy. Oh, you'll soon be out of here. Well, I hope Uncle Morgan and I both will. Aunt Martha, after all that's gone on, Jerry and I have been doing a lot of thinking, and, well, we'd like to... We'd like to really be members of the family. Morgan and I have always been quite self-sufficient. Well, of course. But since he's been so ill and all... We have a plan we'd like to tell you about. Go on. Well, the woman who lives in Dad's old house was well, much too big for her, and, well, we understand she's looking for a couple to share it. You're suggesting that... Your uncle and I? You see, Aunt Martha, this woman's a nurse, and, and she could help you take care of Uncle Morgan. Well, I must say that's very interesting. Do you like the idea? Oh, it's incredible. Wait till Morgan hears about this. Of course, you would be the one to decide. Oh, no, indeed. I never do anything without your uncle's full agreement. Oh, he's in no condition to make any... Oh, of course he is. But last time he... Uh, you I are mean, we... quite wrong if you think your uncle is incapable of making decisions. Go and ask him. But Aunt Martha... Go on. Discuss this unusual scheme with your Uncle Morgan. He's in room 302. And give him my love. Ridiculous if the old boy's in as bad shape as he was last okay, time. Hold on. If he doesn't know what he's saying, maybe we can talk him into anything. Oh, there you are. I was uh, coming to get you. Uh, doctor, we're looking for Uncle Morgan's room. I regret to inform you that your uncle is dead. Oh, well, that's unhappy news. But, but you must agree, Doctor, it was not unexpected. Uh, very true. Morgan Taylor was a fine man. I've known him for many years. Uh, should we go back to be with Aunt Martha? Well, I wouldn't if I were you. Uh, let me be the one to tell her. You can come back later. Well, we have clear sailing. That's what you think. Well, of course we do. Aunt Martha has nowhere else to turn. You mean we're stuck with her? Well, stuck is hardly the word after what I found out. You've been doing something behind my back. I wondered why you were so agreeable. I've simply been using my time to learn more about rare stamps. You got hold of it. No, but I've discovered that the Brattleboro Eagle is one of the most sought-after stamps in the world. Worth how much? At least $200,000. Why, Aunt Martha's rich. Certainly, and when I give her all the details, she'll sell. I won't leave her alone with you for one minute. <laughs> Didn't think you would. But we can't spring this on her right away. Why not? Diplomacy, you fool. We must treat her very gently. All right. All right. I'm the eldest. I'll take care of the funeral arrangements for Uncle Morgan. Flowers, telephone calls, all that sort of thing. Yeah, but first, we must get to the hospital and give Aunt Martha our deepest sympathy. here to see Mrs. Morgan Taylor. Uh, n never mind, nurse. I'll, I'll speak to them. Uh, uh, I'm glad you're here. Um, well, is it all right to see Aunt Martha now? Uh, come down here where we can be alone. I, I, I've been trying to reach you. Well, I know there are things to be taken care of, and I'm quite ready to accept all uh, the responsibility. Sit, sit down, please. Well, how is Aunt Martha? I have seldom known a more devoted couple than your aunt and uncle. Oh, I know, and I'm sure Aunt Martha is going to need it's all... It's strange, uh, or perhaps it isn't, uh, how often this sort of thing happens. Well, our parents were that way, sort of as if one always knew what the other was thinking. Well, then you'll be better prepared for what I have to tell you. Just let me talk to Aunt Martha. Uh, I realize, Doctor, that she has no family of her own. When I told her of your uncle's death, she took it very calmly. 
course, she knew how ill he was. Well, he was an old man. He couldn't go on forever. But without him, you see... Oh, don't worry, doctor. I've made up my mind to take good care of her. I gave her a sedative. And... Do you think it's worn off by now? When I looked in on her later, she was gone. What? <laughs> she left the hospital? Within an hour of your uncle's death, your aunt died peacefully in her sleep. I'm glad you took full responsibility. That lets me off the hook. Oh, not now. The whole situation has changed. Oh, no, it hasn't. You're the older brother and you asked for it. Go on, do your duty. Oh, please, Jerry. The lawyer said that's enough cash to cover a decent burial. Oh, but the will says we share and share alike. Share what? Nothing but bills and a mortgage. Well, I'm putting their house up for sale. You can't until we find a stamp. You're the expert. Go through that collection again. It must be there. It's not. Nothing but some U.S. commemoratives. Maybe a couple of hundred dollars worth. Well, sell them. I think the Brattleboro may be in a safe deposit box. Well, then where's the key? Oh, no use. I've looked in every one of those drawers. Well, what did the lawyer have to say? Uh, he knows nothing. He says he never even met Uncle Morgan. Do you believe him? As much as you do. Oh, I've been through the closets and every pocket. Hey, the books. What if he put the stamp between the pages of one of those books? I'll stay here until I go through each one of them. Uh, and, and maybe there's a safe behind one of these walls. I'll tear down this house if I have to. No, 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 no. You, you have to get back to your family. I'll, I'll stay on here and see what I can do. I'm not leaving here until I find it. Not if I find it first. We know that no amount of luck in the world is going to help you find that stamp. Retribution? Perhaps. In payment for an insatiable greed. Not everyone earns his own way in this world, but if you depend upon someone else to make your way easier, you may be in for an unhappy awakening. I'll be back shortly. One of the mistakes the brothers Taylor made was writing their uncle off as a man too old to know what he was doing. Morgan Taylor knew exactly what he was up to, all the way, and so did his lifetime partner. What a pair of senior citizens. One unanswered question. Did George Taylor really know the stamp he willed his brother was worthless? And if so... What did he mean when he said that Morgan would know what to do with it? I leave you to reach your own conclusions. Our cast included Lloyd Batista, Robert Dryden, Russell Horton, and Ann Petoniak. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Mrs. E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time... Pleasant dreams. I hope you enjoyed this episode of CBS Radio Mystery Theater. If you enjoyed this and want to hear more, please subscribe to this channel. You can also visit my other YouTube channel by searching for...